Good morning. This is S. Manjula, Assistant Professor and HOD, Department of Computer Application, St. Anna's Arts and Science College. Today we are going to see the topic Unified Modeling Language. This chapter we are going to cover modeling and its benefits and different types of diagrams such as class diagram, use case diagram, sequence diagram, collaboration diagram, state chart diagram, activity diagram, component diagram and deployment diagram. So this is a very important 10 mark question and they can ask in 5 mark also. Modeling and its benefits. Modeling is an abstract representation of a system. For example, if you are building a, uh, building a construction, before that you are just preparing a model. In the same way, in a software also, you are preparing a model. So this is called as unified modeling language. In this system means any process or structure. For example, health service, corporation or computer software. Modeling make it easier to express the complex ideas, it enhance the learning, it is lower cost and its simplicity and elegance guide you through the process. And also, it provides the extensibility and specialization mechanism. And it is independent of programming language and it supports higher level development concepts. The first one is class diagram. A class is drawn as a rectangle with three components which is separated by horizontal lines. Here you can see the customer is represented as a class diagram. Here the top name holds the class name, attributes in the middle compartment and the bottom holds the list of operations. The top name holds the class name. Here the customer is the name of the class and the ID, name, address, phone number and account number are the attributes of this class. And what are the operations the particular customer can do? You can do the general inquiry, you can deposit the money, you can withdraw the money, you can open an account, close an account, apply for loan and request for. So these are all the operations the customer can do. So like this you are representing is called as class diagram. Here so many classes are there for bank, customer, teller, account, loan, checking and saving. These are all the set of classes and here we are just representing the relationship between the one class into another class. The next one is use case diagram. It specifies the flow of the events in the system. It is a graph of actors. Here you can able to see the customer the movie catalog, the order system and credit processing is the person or we can also call it as actors. This use case diagram, we are representing the communication among these actors and the use cases are defined. For example, consider the ticket terminal. If you are going to Satyam movie theater, you are going to book a ticket means the customer what they can ask, they can ask the display movie choices and this is request movie details and print pre-order tickets and order tickets. So these are all the process this actor can do, the customer. And these two queries, display movie and request movie details, that will be handled by movie catalog. And this will be handled by order system person. And this will be order tickets handled by credit processing. So in such a way, you are representing the actors in your particular system which is called as use case diagram and the next one is sequence diagram the sequence diagram describes the behavior of a system by weaving the interaction between the system and its environment this sequence diagram has two dimension one is vertical dimension which represents the time here you can able to see the timeline this vertical line shows the time this time the particular caller will lift the receiver and this time a dialogue tone ring tone will be heard by the caller so this vertical dimension represents the time the horizontal dimension represents the objects caller phone it receiver and accounting these are all the objects in this diagram and the lifeline represents the object existing during the interaction so what happened during the time of interaction? The first one, this is a sample example for telephonic conversation which has happened on the olden days. 
First, the caller lifts the receiver. After receiver, the phone network will give the dial-up tone to the phone. After getting the dial tone, caller, the caller is start ringing the dialing the numbers. After dialing the numbers, the ringtone will be heard by the receiver side and also the caller side. And immediately the receiver will answer the caller. And after uh, finish the talking. After this account is over, it stop ringing by the receiver or and caller also. The stop tone will be received to the caller. So this is a sample sequence diagram for representing the telephonic process. The next one, what we are going to see is collaboration diagram. Here we are representing the collaboration between the objects in a particular contest to achieve a desired outcome. Here we are representing the sequence number for the steps. It is also similar like a sequence diagram. In this caller exchange and receiver talk. This will be represented in one. And here the first part will be happen is uh, represented by number. The first one is half oak. And the second one is here the dial tone. After that the third one. So here just they are representing the number which will be very clear for understanding between the uh, events or between the diagrams. The first one is off hook that is the receiver take the call and here the dial dialing tone and the third step is the caller dial the numbers and it will be go to the exchange and that will be a ring tone will be generated and that will be received by the receiver. This is the fourth step and the fifth step on hook. On hook means they are just communicating between them and after finishing their conversation, they just off hook. That is the sixth step. So here in this collaboration diagram, the steps will be defined with set, uh, set of uh, steps represented with a number. Here the sequence is indicated by a number. So that is collaboration. And the next one is state chart diagram. It shows the sequence of states that an object goes through its lifetime. The state is represented in rounded rectangle box. Here you can able to see that rounded rectangle box. Here there are two components. One the name, one is the first one is name. Name compartment hold the optional name of the state. Then the next one is internal transition. This compartment holds the list of internal actions or activities performed in response to events received. So this is a, this diagram is a example diagram for an ATM system. Initially, the ATM system is idle. Okay, so this state is represented in a rounded rectangle box. ATM idle. And the next, what happens? You are entering the card in the ATM. So after your card entry, this will be go to the card read state. So this will be go to the card read state. This is the name of the state. So now the card is reading. After this card is read successfully, it will go to the next state. It is pin entry state. Pin entry state. If the pin is correct, what it will do? It will do the verification process. And if it is correct, it will go to the next session. Otherwise, it will ask the re-enter the pin. Otherwise, it will abort the process and it will return the code. So, these are the sample process for state chart diagram, which will be represented for. The next one is activity diagram. It is used to define the entire business process in an activity diagram. It's also provide the flow between the use cases and several cases. Activity diagram. It is used to model an entire business process. It is also provide a view of flow and what is going on inside a use case or among several classes. It is also in similar like state chart diagram. But in an activity diagram, we can see the the entire process, the overall process of a particular application. For example, here you can see the diagram for processing mortgage request. Here for this, first step is you are preparing the incoming documents. And the second one is you are indexing the document. 
uh, indexing documents means the first one, the second one, the third word document, and that you are collected. After that, you are making it to an electronic file, and after all the complete request, you are just given to check the data for the life insurance and calculate data for construct and mortgage. And in this process, draw contract mortgage deed and pay provision to insurance agent. And at last, you draw the insurance policy. So this overall will be represented in an activity diagram. The activity diagram for processing mortgage request is explained in this activity diagram. The next one is component diagram. It represents the physical components such as source code, executable program, user interface and the design. So everything is considered as a component. This component diagram is represented in here for ordering system, product and if you are product, here the product is a component and order and customer and account. So everything is considered as a component in this process. So the product will be developed by the product site will be developed by the software people and customer details also prepared by the software people. And this order details may not be may or may not be developed by the software. They can also purchase the process of order that is called as off the shelf components purchased to put together a graphical user interface. So you can bring the bring a particular software and you can install in your software. So that will be represented in this component diagram. So suppose if you are ordering a particular product in an Amazon, so product details based on the item code, I am ordering that and this order will be go to the this customer and after that the customer will be given their amount in their account. So I am getting the money from the account based on the order. So this is this dotted line shows the dependency in between the order and account. So this overall process of a purchasing a particular product is represented in this component diagram. And the last one is the deployment diagram. It shows the configuration of runtime processing elements and the software components process and objects that lie within them. It is a graph of nodes connected by communication association. The solid lines represent the connection and the dashed lines represent the dependency. For example, to get a particular file, the server 1, server 2, the server 3 will depending on this main server. So the, if I want to get a particular file, this will be con contain this processor. So this is called as deployment. Before your deployment means installing, installing a particular file before execution of that software. For example, in a web server, an application server, this is an university database and this is mainframe. Here, if you have a student administration files and student seminar schedule registration and some files, it has to be installed in this application server so that the whole process will be executed correctly. So this will be checked at the time of deployment diagram. Before executing the whole process, whole system, they are just checking what are the files which has to be installed in the server. So thank you very much. Uh, study well girls, all the best.